Hello everyone, and let's start the 2015 year of movie reviews here on my channel with a bang. Or will it be? Now, basically what I'm going to review for you today is Taken 3, which I just saw. And I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. But before I give you my thoughts on this movie, let's go back to, to the year of 2008. 2008, 2007, when the first Taken came out, just, yes, I'm 100% sure it came out in 2008. And basically, when I first saw it, I was actually really surprised with it. I thought it was actually fairly good. I was pretty, honestly, quite honestly, a bit surprised with the film. I'm just like, wow, okay, Liam Neeson's not becoming like this type of actor who would willingly do these type of movies every year just to get some cash money. It's like, no, he's coming back with a, um, um, like a big point. It's like, yeah, Taking was really good. It's like, would that fulfill a promise with him being in better movies than before? No. <laughs> Liam Neeson is a great actor. I really do like him, and I will sincerely say that he hasn't lost his Liam Neeson touch. Like his old age of a badassery that he has, is because if and there's one film that came out that like like for like the last few years he was like in a lot of bad movies. The only movie that I really loved him in rather recently was like a few years ago was a movie called. Um, the Grey, and that is a fantastic film. I would very, very highly suggest that film. But I, I really loved the first. I really, really enjoyed the first Taken a lot. Then I saw a second Taken movie. I, that was really disappointing. This is the same director doing the same thing. Well, once in the same thing, but it's basically this the same style and the same format that the second movie had. And the story basically goes. That Liam Neeson and his daughter and his wife are like basically, you know, um, kind of like being like hunted down, and like because like in the early point in the movie, like his wife, played by from uh, from K. Jensen, or well, if you don't know who the actor is, I would just say that the actor who plays his wife, well, she, well, she did the portrayal of. Uh, Jean Grey in X Men Two and Three, and she's a, and she's a good actor. But in this movie, it's kind of like she was so forced in and just so off. But aside from that, like in terms of focus on the story, like he's being framed for the murder of his wife, and Forrest Whitaker is basically trying to interrogate him and almost trying to get him. And like it's almost like he's copying the fugitive in a way. And I can see those moments where I'm just like this, almost like the fugitive, or it's like so many. Like, so many movies are kind of, like, have that future feel, like, the person is on a run because he's being framed of something, even though he's not. Even though the smart thing is to actually turn yourself in. But the thing, thing, but the main thing is, is that with this film, it feels just so redundant and so drawn out and so pampered to death that it feels just ostracized with just abundance of action movie cliches. And not, and not just cliches, but they're boring as hell. I'm not joking. He, Liam Neeson in this movie, he doesn't start kicking the ass until the one hour mark. And that, and at that point, there's 30, 40 minutes left in the film. And I'm just like, come on, keep going to get him more involved. And it's not the stab, but the film just so feels so redundant and so unperpetrated and so boring and dull on points. I'm just like, oh, God, please make this stop. Now, I, and the story just felt so, like, copy and paste from much other type of films. And, I granted, it doesn't have some more stupid logic from the second one, you know, like, with the whole throwing grenades on the roofs idea, because that works really well. Duh. Like, God, that's so stupid. But um, it really does feel like it's just mimicking these other films, without, even without being self-aware. Like, if you're going to mimic something, at least be smart and self-aware about it, but this film is not doing that at all. But aside from that, it's drawn out, and it's boring as hell. Now, I will get, now here's my positive aspect for the film. Liam Neeson, is, I'm not saying he has a skill back, but he's doing this typical Liam Neeson thing that he did in the first two films, and to be honest, that's not bad. And the other thing is Maggie Grace, who plays his daughter, who is beautiful as, who's beautiful as always, and she actually does a decent job too. 
But um, everything else is like the acting is just so thrown down and so laughable at times. I'm just like, God, this movie is so ridiculous. And I will say, the, I think there's like three action scenes that kind of did stand out to me, and those ones were not actually half bad. I think like, there's the first one that gets into, and then there's another one within this crossing cross area where he's in, and that scene was really good. And the final climax was, I, I will say straight up, the, the final climax within this film, I was actually kind of engaged. I'm like, wow, I'm actually kind of engaged at this. And, um... I actually really do, strangely enough, I actually really do admire the use of practical effects in the film. I know I'm a bit of a sucker for certain, like, CGI, but I really do admire the practical effects at times. And I will say, it feels like, you know, by the end, it's kind of like, you know, it's tying all stuff up. It's like, okay, good, finally. It's kind of coming to a close, and the ending is kind of a bittersweet for its own sake. Um, but aside from that, I think this movie is still really bad. It's not that good. And in the end, I feel like Taken 3 is a bit of a disappointment for the Taken movies. It's kind of like, um, oh man, this is happening so much with movie franchises. The Hangover, Back to the Future, Jurassic Park, whereas like the first films, the not alright, are great. There's like the second and the third does not even stand up to the greatness of the first. <laughs> There's so many trilogies are losing it. Thankfully, in my own view, The Hobbit is the only one that's kind of doing that. That's keeping that momentum going. But in the end, I still think Taken 3 is definitely one of the most definitely a disappointing start for 2015. And hopefully this won't be a sign to come for other big films. And I really, really damn hope that 2015 has much better films. Please don't disappoint. Jurassic World, Mad Max, uh, Avengers, and Star Wars. Please don't disappoint on those. In the end, I actually, I, in the end, of course, I'm not really ha happy with Hagen 3. Like, there's some certain things I didn't mind in it, but in the end, it wasn't that great. And I'm going to say, Taking 3 gets a 30%. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed my review on Taken 3 of my very first review of 2015. And let's hope for a brand new year. Even though this was a rocky start, hopefully it'll get smooth again with more positive reviews in the future. If I hope so. Thank you, everyone. And I'll see you within the future for more reviews. Thank you for watching and stay around as always. And remember, stay strong.